Hey guys, I'm Georgia and welcome back to my channel for somewhat of a lighter mystery episode this week. I've been wanting to talk about this story for ages, ever since I first read about it months ago, and this week I just feel like I need to talk about something a little bit lighter hearted, you know? Sometimes true crime can get really heavy. But don't worry, this story is a fascinating one and honestly, it scares me a little. Today we're going to be talking about time slips, and specifically Bold Street in Liverpool, where they seem to happen more often than anywhere else. But before we get into the story, I want to thank Magellan TV for sponsoring this week, the documentary streaming service. I'm sure you've all already heard why I love Magellan TV, they've been sponsoring me on my channel for years, so instead of listing all the reasons why they are amazing, I'm just going to jump straight in and tell you about a documentary that I've watched recently and I know so many of you would also love. The Family Who Vanished. This is a true crime documentary focused around the case of the Chohan family, who in 2003 vanished without a trace. A husband and wife, her mother and two babies disappeared before all the adults' bodies eventually washed up along the UK coasts. The story under the surface of this case turned out to be much more tangled than most people could even begin to imagine, and ended up being a cover-up for much more than just murder. This documentary is so well done and is 100% worth a watch. You honestly could not guess where this story goes and why this happened. My heart breaks for this poor family. If you want to try out Magellan TV for yourself and watch The Family Who Vanished, then you can click on the link in the description box to claim your one month free trial. Magellan TV have more true crime and history documentaries than you could ever dream of. So this video is kind of a supernatural video I suppose. You've got to suspend a bit of belief to be able to believe what I'm going to be sharing with you today. As a very sceptical person myself, I don't know if I truly believe this story, but there's no denying that the evidence around this is fascinating and there are people out there who do fully believe in this. Please let me know if you're one of them. This is a video to be taken with a pinch of salt, conclusive proof of all this I'm going to share today doesn't really exist, as with anything paranormal or supernatural. We're going to be talking about a lot of first-hand accounts, reddit comments, rumours, it's just something interesting to learn about. When you google for the definition of a time slip, the main answer you'll get is how it's used as a plot device in fantasy and science fiction novels. But in real life, the phenomenon is the same. It's when a person or a group of people seem to travel through time by unknown means. You may have seen the historical photos that occasionally go viral on the internet of somebody modern looking back in the 1930s, someone with what looks like an iPhone or a modern clothing out of place. That can be explained away as a time slip and is different from time travel, the latter of which is intentional whilst time slips are unintentional, apparently. Certain areas seem to attract more of these slips in time than others and the number one place, at least in the UK, seems to be Bold Street in Liverpool. Obviously not being from Liverpool myself, I gave it a Google, Bold Street is a stone's throw away from Liverpool Central train station which you can access on that road. It's a main street in the city with coffee shops, restaurants and shops lining it. It certainly doesn't look any different from any of the surrounding streets, but apparently it is. The most extensive information I could find about this phenomenon in relation to Bold Street is in an article on the Liverpool Echo by Amelia Boner and local paranormal expert Tom Slemon. The story you'll find repeated across the internet most often involves an off-duty policeman called Frank, who one Saturday in July 1996 was shopping in Liverpool with his wife Carol. They decided to separate for a bit, go do their own bits of shopping, with Carol going to a bookshop called Dylan on Bold Street and Frank going to a record store on Ranella Street. About 20 minutes later, Frank walks up towards Bold Street to meet his wife in the bookshop when he noticed something weird. Bold Street had suddenly gone strangely quiet, the hustle and bustle of the street was gone. Suddenly, an out-of-place van speeds in front of him, blaring its horn. It looked odd and Frank noted that the van had the name Kaplan's on the side. As he crossed the road, he saw that the bookshop was no longer there, instead it was a different shop called Crips, selling shoes and handbags. Baffled, Frank looks around and noticed that people were wearing clothes that were very out of place. They were from the 50s. The men in trilbies and overcoats, the women in pillbox hats and elegant gloves. In his 90s clothing, he was completely out of place. 
The story then goes that he spotted a young woman wearing 90s clothing as well, carrying a Miss Selfridge bag, and that kind of assured him that everything was okay. The girl walked into Cripps and Frank followed, and as he did so, it just transformed back into the bookshop. He was back in the 90s. Frank grabbed this woman by the arm and asked her if she'd just experienced the same weird thing he had, and she said, yeah, I thought it was a new shop that just opened. I was going to look at the clothes, and now it's a bookshop, before just walking out. Frank, of course, quickly found his wife and asked her if she'd experienced anything strange while she was in the store. She said she hadn't. But Frank was sure that he hadn't been imagining what had just happened. It had felt so real. Later, when the story was told publicly on the Billy Butler show, people started calling in saying that in the late 50s and early 60s, there was indeed a store called Crips in this location. Capland, the name that Frank had spotted on the side of the van that nearly ran him over, was also a business in Liverpool around this time. But that wasn't all. Plenty of people called in saying they'd experienced a very similar thing on Bold Street. I found one Reddit thread which I'll leave linked down below which shares some other of these experiences. Again, take it with a pinch of salt as there's no conclusive proof that any of this is true, it's just kind of first-hand accounts. There's the story of a young girl called Imogen who decided to go into Liverpool to buy her sister Abigail some bits for her new baby and headed to a new mother care store in town on the corner of Lord Street and Whitechapel. It was about a seven or so minute walk from Bold Street. Imogen picked up a few bits and bobs for the baby and noticed how cheap the items were but figured they were just on offer as this was a new store. When Imogen tried to pay at the counter with her credit card, the staff looked at her very strangely and got a manager before saying they didn't accept cards there. Disappointed, Imogen had to put the items back as she didn't have any cash on her. When she got home, she mentioned this strange happening to her mum, who was very shocked. That mother care store closed years ago, she said. It's a bank now in that location. Not believing her, her mum took Imogen back the very next day who saw that, sure as anything, that spot was now a bank. That mother care had closed before she was even born. Another story, a 19-year-old man named Sean was shoplifting in Liverpool back in 2006 and was running from a security guard down Hanover Street. Trying to shake the guard off, Sean runs down Brooks Alley. He suddenly gets a tight chest and is out of breath so he stops, expecting the guard to come down after him any second, only he doesn't. Sean walks back out onto Hanover Street and walks away but realises that something is strange. Everything looked different. The cars were old fashioned, the roadworks that were there two seconds ago were now gone and everyone was in strange old style clothes. He begins to panic, realising that he must have travelled back in time. I've got a cat coming in to join me. Hello, Rhubarb. Can you imagine how disorientating it must be to suddenly just be back in time? Sean then remembered that he had his mobile phone on him, so pulled it out of his pocket to call for help. Only, of course, it didn't work. Spotting a kiosk selling newspapers, he heads over and looks at the front pages. The date was the 18th of May, 1967. Panicking, he continues walking down the streets and reaches the jeweller's H. Samuel, deciding to try his phone again. Luckily, this time his phone worked, and when he looked up, he saw that everything was back to normal in front of him. But strangely, down the other end of the road from which he had just come, he could still see people walking around in 1967. This could all just be made up, of course, but later on, the security guard who had been chasing Sean was tracked down and he was interviewed. He said that he'd followed Sean down Brooks Alley, but he disappeared in front of his eyes. And when the facts of Sean's story were checked, everything was historically accurate. Another story, 30 years ago, somebody was making their way through Liverpool to meet their girlfriend, intending to catch a train from Central Station, which, as I said, is a stone's throw away from Bold Street. You can literally access the station from Bold Street. As they always did, this person walked down the ramp from Bold Street into the station before noticing something strange. A brand new coffee shop on the right that hadn't been there before. And by before, I mean literally moments before. It was noted that everyone in the coffee shop was wearing old clothes from around the 1900s. And this person's first thought was that this must have been a film set, something being filmed. Only when they looked back, it had already gone. Years later, this person learned of time slips and theorised that this must have been what happened to them because they were never able to forget this. It was so clear that there was something there, then it was gone. 
The final Bold Street story I guess I'll share for you features a Mr X who worked on the street. About 15 years ago he was walking down Renshaw Street before taking a shortcut through a lane that took you across the railway line. He knew this area well, this was a trip he made all the time. And that day Mr X was going to meet his wife. He knew that a store called Collinson's had closed down a while before, but as he walked into Bold Street, he noticed that Collinson's must have reopened, the windows full of hats and shoes as it always had been before. He also noticed that a shop called Catchpoles had moved across the street to a different location. But then he saw that all the cars were 10 to 15 years out of date, and it was unusually quiet. There must be some sort of strange event going on, he thought. So he continues on his journey to meet his wife as planned outside the bank before going in and doing what they needed to do. When they came out of the bank though, everything was back to normal. Collinson's was closed and Catchpole's was back to where it always had been. And his wife hadn't noticed anything strange. I could keep going with all sorts of strange stories about Bold Street, but instead I'll just link the Reddit thread down below so you can go and have a read yourself if you wish. I'll share some more time slip stories from places other than Bold Street in just a moment. Many people who experience these time slips report the events feel weirdly flat and lifeless. Even sounds appear muffled as if they're from far away or behind a screen. Some people report feeling depression and unease, although if you didn't feel uneasy whilst experiencing something like this, I would have questions. Every reported time slip from Bold Street tends to go back in time to the 1950s or 1960s, with only a couple of reports as early as the 1900s, but it's never been earlier than this. What is the significance of that time period? It's also interesting to me how there never seems to be much interaction between the past people and the time slipper. If this is real, do the past people know it's happening? Do they notice somebody suddenly appearing out of nowhere wearing strange futuristic clothing and carrying strange technology? You would think that this would be more noted in more textbooks, but then again maybe people who do see it were just written off as crazy. How far can you interact in these scenarios? The only case in which it seems somebody communicated with somebody from the past is Imogen's story from the mother care store where she tried to pay with the cards. So you clearly can talk. Because I'm me, I also question what would happen if a time slip happened to a much more dangerous point in history. What if you slip back to the time of the Great Plague or the Spanish Influenza? Can you catch it and bring it back with you? Or what if you find yourself in the middle of a fight? Can you get hurt? Can you die in the past and just vanish in the present? We obviously spend a lot of time discussing missing people on this channel, people who literally vanish into thin air. Could this be an explanation? It's far-fetched, but could it be? When this happens, are you actually in the past? Are you able to talk and interact? Or are you just a glitch, a ghost? What's the butterfly effect when things like this happen? Again, as I said, I'm a sceptic, I'm inclined not to believe in this kind of stuff, but it is fascinating to ponder over, isn't it? Some people describe away time slips as some form of complex deja vu, family memories passing on down through DNA. I mean, we know so little about the human brain that that couldn't be written off entirely. Are you just experiencing your past ancestors' memories? But there is kind of one legitimate theory that could explain this phenomenon, or at least as legitimate as a time travel theory can be. I recently read a book called One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston and I really enjoyed it. Wait, let me let me grab it, it's here. This book. Didn't think I'd be talking about this book in a video, but here we are. Great book, highly recommend, really, really enjoyed it. But my only qualm with this book was that the plot was unrealistic. If you don't want a slight spoiler of this book, maybe skip forward 30 seconds or so. But basically the plot of it is a character from the 1970s is stuck on the New York subway in, I think it's 2020. And it transpires that she fell on the tracks as a big power cut struck. And she kind of got stuck in this time loop thing, stuck on the same subway line as a 20 something year old forever. And only certain people can really see her. I don't really do fantasy books and I kind of went into this one thinking it was based in real life so I was a bit like, huh, when that's kind of the storyline that transpired. But maybe that storyline wasn't as unbelievable as I thought it was. 
Liverpool has its own underground tube system and many people on the internet claim that this underground system is what's responsible for this huge number of time slips. The underground system running in concentric circles underneath the city, the centre of which is Brooks Alley and the Bold Street area. A lot of people say that this high voltage electricity running under the city at all times could explain the slips and I'd be intrigued to know if there are any reports of time slips happening before the underground system was in place. From my quick googling it looks like it's over 100 years old but I assume it wouldn't have had the power back then that it has now. Also about one kilometre below Bold Street is a highly complex system of geological fault lines, the power of which some say is intensified by electrical currents. Interestingly, a lot of people report paranormal experiences on the London Underground as well, as well as there also being some stories of time slips. I don't profess to be a physics expert who knows a ton about electricity, but electromagnetism is one of the four fundamental forces at work in this universe the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, the gravitational force, and the electromagnetic force. Gravity is the weakest of these four forces, and that's literally what keeps us anchored to our planet. So imagine the strength of the other three. These forces are what keeps our planet in motion, the atoms consisting of everything we've ever known in place. If that's messed with, it could be possible that it could cause somewhat of a glitch. Apparently it's all to do with quantum physics, but we all know I'm not even going to attempt to explain or learn all of that, so that's definitely a video for somebody else. But could electromagnetism, the voltage under the city running in concentric circles and the geological fault lines explain all of this? I don't know, maybe, some people say it does. Tom Slemon, the paranormal expert, has spent a lot of time researching Bold Street and he's claimed that he found evidence of time variations using digital chronometers, of which he placed four around the street. Apparently the chronometer showed time variations of 1 100th and 1 50th seconds. Chronometers are known for being unreliable though, with the smallest thing affecting the needle, so take from that what you will. Also, generally, Tom Slemon has an iffy reputation. Many people accuse him of making up a lot of the stories he shares, but not all of them. Some of them are very much verifiable, so we don't know. Again, paranormal stuff, supernatural. We don't know anything for sure. The most interesting thing to me is that you can find so many stories on the internet of people experiencing time slips on Bold Street, but these are just the ones that have been shared and reported. Imagine the amount of people who could have experienced these things without realising what they were, thinking they had momentarily gone mad or they were daydreaming. Maybe they just put it down to an elaborate dream. Tell me, have you ever experienced anything weird on Bold Street? But do you want to hear some more time slip stories from not Liverpool? Well, one of the most famous cases involves two women, Charlotte Ann Moberly and Eleanor Jordan, who were the principal and vice principal of St Hughes College in Oxford. In August 1901, the pair were visiting the Palace of Versailles in France, and whilst walking in the gardens, they said they encountered people in centuries-old clothing, who they later assumed to be members of the court of Marie Antoinette. They even believed they caught a glimpse of the Queen herself, specifically on the day in 1792, when she heard the revolutionaries had stormed the palace. As this was back in 1901, there's obviously no way to talk to these women and confirm the story today, so it's up to you whether or not you believe this. But they very much did, they shared this story for the rest of their lives, and they both very much backed each other up. In October 1972, two couples from Britain, the Simpsons and the Gisbys, were driving through France to reach their holiday destination in Spain. In Montelima, they come across an extremely old-fashioned looking hotel and decide to stay the night there as everywhere else was full. It was all a bit strange, the hotel was incredibly basic and the locals were all wearing this old-style clothing. But hey, maybe that was just the fashion, they thought. The entire stay at this hotel cost only 19 francs, which was incredibly cheap, but they just sort of assumed there'd been an error and got out of there before somebody could correct it. On their way home from Spain, they decided to try their luck with this super cheap hotel again, only they couldn't find it. And when they got home, photographs they'd taken of themselves in this hotel seemed to just disappear from the middle of the film roll. No trace of them found on even the negative strips. And they never could find out where this hotel was. 
Of course, as I've already said, everything in this video is to be taken with a pinch of salt. There is no actual proof to suggest that any of these stories really happened. But I've covered just a fraction of the stories I found on the internet in my research, and we can't assume that every single person who shared a time slip story colluded with somebody else to make up this crazy narrative. I'm sure there are people who have lied and made up time slips for attention, but that won't be every single story. I mean, you look at the comments of any video on YouTube discussing time slips, and there are multiple comments of people sharing their own experiences. Could high voltage underground railway lines really be an explanation? Could they really cause a phenomenon such as this? Perhaps that could explain all the time slips in Liverpool, but what about other places in the world? I'm no expert, I don't even think I believe in this stuff at all, but there are those of you who do and I'd be fascinated to hear from you in the comments. I always want to hear life experiences and beliefs different from my own, it is just fascinating. If you have ever experienced a time slip of your own, if you've slipped through the cracks in time, please tell me. I definitely want to hear from you if you have. I can't wait to read through the comment section on this video, and I think that's where I'm going to round this one up. I know it's a little bit different from my usual thing, I know it's very speculative, but it's just a really interesting thing to read and research about, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.